last month. The joint in the relief was echoed around the globe by the multitude of people after the successful international rescue of 12 boys and their football coach from a cave in northern Thailand. Sadika, welcome to Thailand Today program on NBT World. Today we have Mr. Peter Hammond. He is Deputy Chief of Mission at the uh, U.S. Embassy in Bangkok. He will tell us about uh, the United States and Thailand uh, in their rescued mission to help the 12 Thai boys and their coach out of the cave. Mm -hmm. Swadika. Swadika. Welcome to Thailand <clears throat> to the program, sir. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be back. In fact, I would like to take this opportunity to thanks, uh, well, with um, our, our thanks and gratitude to the U.S of the people, also the people of the country, the whole country to give a hand to Thai people. Well, I have to say it, it is a pleasure to be here to talk about such, in the end, a, a happy topic for mm -hmm. the most part. Um, I've now been here for two years in this assignment, and when anybody asks me what the high point is, mm -hmm. I say around 1035 on the evening of, I think it was July 2nd, July 3rd, yes. when a call came in saying, they've been found alive. Uh, uh, That's the high point. That's gone too far already. We have mm. need to start from the beginning. Of course, we can start from the beginning. <laughs> we need to hear because of, this is the mission which is, it, as, as we all say that, it's a possible mission from the impossible mission. So let me start, begin with this. Um, so the opera, you know, the, who reach you for the, for, the, for the help, for the assistance? Sure. Uh, we, I first heard about the, the case uh, of the missing boys uh, 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 was at uh, the that beginning of that week, the Sunday, Monday, yeah. I think, uh -huh. um, 24th, 25th, and we saw that the search was beginning mm. and watching with interest, and it was the evening of uh, June 26th when the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, because they deal with foreign missions, okay. uh, reached out and called me. Oh. Yeah. Uh, to ask if uh, the United States could provide some technical assistance uh, to support uh, the Thai government's search here. Uh, and so I immediately started calling both civilian uh, teams that had search and rescue uh, assistance through our USAID office and uh, military search and rescue teams uh, through our JUSTMAG and our Defense Attaché Office. Okay. And it turned out that the civilian teams could come, but it would take at least three days to arrive from, where? from America. From America, They yeah. would have to come from somewhere from within where? the continental U.S. Oh, yeah. But the uh, military side had a team ready of about 30 people uh, based in Japan. Ooh. So what we had to do was work through that first night. This okay. is the night of the 26th, the Tuesday, mm -hmm. I remember. Mm -hmm. uh, because within the US system, mm -hmm. an official request had to come from the Department of State, mm -hmm. our foreign ministry, mm -hmm. to go to the Department of Defense, okay. making a request. Right. And the Department of Defense had to say, yes, definitely. And they had to send a message to Indo-PACOM in Hawaii to say, oh, yes, definitely. Goodness. And they had to send a message to Japan saying, mm -hmm. send the team, all of which was paperwork and phone calls and things. And we were very pleased that uh, I think we counted 28 hours from the time I was first called mm -hmm. by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs mm -hmm. to when mm -hmm. the search and rescue team mm -hmm. from, that had been based in Japan mm -hmm. arrived in Chiang Rai. I think that's about as quick as we could have managed anywhere. And it's because um, on the U.S. side, we recognized there is a time-sensitive request here, mm. and it's a request by one of our closest allies looking mm. for support. Oh, nice. And we had to respond right away oh, any way we could. So great. So, well, you know, my feeling when listening to you, as if it happened yesterday. I still know, feel like still it happened yesterday. <laughs> it's still very vivid for me. Uh, 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 because we were very engaged uh, in trying to provide the support mm. as fast How many as were possible. There? How many were the operation team? In the team that came from Japan, there was either 30 or 32. We've heard both numbers, just over 30. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. in addition, we had a few people come in a couple of days later 
from uh, Hawaii, some other specialists, uh -huh. and we had some support from the embassy who went up to work on media mm -hmm. and on communication between the Thai government and the visitors, helping facilitate that. Mm -hmm. I think at our peak, we had 47 people uh, from the U.S. side oh. up trying to contribute. Oh. Oh. Now, I should explain that the team Please. that came in from Japan uh -huh. was you might call it a search and rescue package. Uh -huh. We had people who were divers. We had people who are experienced in doing parachute landings into difficult areas. Okay. We had people who were masters of rope, using Ooh, rope for rope climbing, climbing. climbing and communicating uh, through large uh, okay. uh, through difficult areas. Right. We had uh, medical specialists. We had a survival specialist Goodness. who would look at nutrition and first aid and such for a difficult circumstance. And we had logistics planners because an operation can mean trying to integrate people from different ministries from, in this case, from different countries. Mm. And so someone who's used to planning out an operation mm. like this. So it was a package mm. to deal with a variety of challenges and then try to help in any way possible. Mm -hmm. And we recognized, of course, that this was led by the Thai government who had many, many more people on the ground okay. uh, doing their best mm -hmm. to rescue the boys. Mm -hmm. And we were just trying to provide support in any way we could to this Thai-led operation, which soon became a multinational operation. Can we consider it as a fortunate time for Thailand to have such a great group of people operated there with fully equipped, I mean, we call, we call it fully equipped because everybody, I mean, every faction, every function, they've been cooperating, you know, you need not dispatch here and there anymore. I have to say that there is good fortune and there's a policy and a strategy of building good relations. Mm, and that is good. for the United States and Thailand. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. We've talked before, this year we're celebrating 200 years of mm. friendly relations. Exactly. We've been allies for over 60 years. We have very close training uh, opportunities on all types of government work. So that relationship was in place. It wasn't yeah. just because uh, the request came up. Uh, and similarly, Thailand has built strong relations with many other partners. Uh -huh. And when your partner, when your friend uh -huh. asks for help, oh, you say, uh, how can I help and how fast can I get there? A friend in need is right. a friend indeed. The, my point is, this wasn't just a circumstance for right now. Uh -huh. This is an outgrowth as a result of a long-standing, friendly relationship and partnership. And these 200 years we really marked this time. This it helped us. We've been celebrating this favorite, year, yeah. and this was a vivid example. Vivid. Mm. I should mention one other thing on uh, how the, the, the help was possible. Yes, as a partner, um, our philosophy is we want our partner to be as capable as possible. Mm. And so we, in any given year are working on all types of training opportunities mm -hmm. that give our people a chance to practice uh -huh. and give our partners mm -hmm. a chance mm -hmm. to practice. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, mm -hmm. this year again, mm -hmm. we had our annual Cobra Gold exercise, Cobra Gold. which every is military year. to yeah, military, yeah, yeah. every year. Uh -huh. And every year, there a part of Cobra Gold deals with humanitarian assistance and disaster response, so, how so. to deal with that. And some of the units on the Thai side who had participated in Cobra Gold and some of the people from Japan had mm. participated in Cobra Gold, okay. they were in Chiang Rai oh, using wow. some of that training. Uh -huh. Another example, the United States and Thailand are co-hosts of a law enforcement academy here. International Law Enforcement Academy. Mm. We call it ILEA. Mm. I L E A. I L E A. I L E A. Uh -huh. And in this past year, we have done a training called it Advanced Tactical Operations, which included practicing a medevac, a mm. nighttime medevac, an evacuation Ooh. by helicopter uh. of people who had medical challenges. So, uh, and there was at least one helicopter and crew who were in Chiang Rai who eventually evacuated the boys 
who had been through this training, uh -huh. something we both benefit from. Mm -hmm. Another example, mm -hmm. in public health, we have lots of cooperation here for right. many, many years. Uh -huh. And one of those areas of cooperation is on protocol for blood testing and medical testing in difficult circumstances. And some of the protocols that were used when the boys were brought out to test them for bacteria and viruses they may have contracted in the okay. cave are things that we have worked on together. And this isn't just, we do this for our benefit too, uh, because we learn from this practice, uh, but our philosophy is we want our partners to also build cap capacity. Again, that's why this wasn't just fortunate, just good luck. Mm. A lot of it is practice and training over many years, and this was a chance to use it. Unbelievable that you're being And what a great and story. <laughs> I still have uh, friends and relatives in America and all over the world in other countries uh, uh, who are still writing me okay about then. this event and uh, how closely they watched it, uh, how pleased they were, how happy they were at the outcome. Uh, and I say, I'm just proud that the United States was able to help a bit uh, in a Thai-led effort. Uh, we had divers. Um, uh, we, we were not... Our team was a sort of a general search and rescue. Uh, they weren't necessarily cave divers. And so our, t our divers uh, tended to be w focus on placing the, the air tanks tank. uh, so that the very experienced cave divers from the UK and Australia and other places and the Thai it. seals uh, could go all the way into uh, the boys. We had divers assisting uh, with that uh, under the cave. An entire country is one in heartfelt thanks. Without national boundaries, working in unity. The world is one. You did talk about plan. I'm really uh, especially interested in this, uh, this group of people. This planner. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because um, the all, all, like about how many countries have been here? Like yes. what, 10, something 20, like 10 something countries. Like. So how did they plan? But it went up so well. So how did they plan? Well, first, other, give a lot of credit and most credit to the uh, Thai government, okay. both the national government and the provincial government, uh -huh. for uh, helping to integrate this assistance. There was um, different countries uh -huh. who sent in. Yes. divers or other specialists. Right, right. There were some companies, including U.S. companies, mm -hmm. who sent equipment or engineers. Mm -hmm. And there was, I mean, the focus has been on the divers, but for a long part of the, the rescue attempt, it wasn't clear whether diving would be enough. Mm -hmm. So there was um, exploration of drilling possibilities, yes. maybe drilling, drilling through the mountain up, yeah. in. There was surveys for other openings yeah, in some yeah. very difficult terrain, mm -hmm. helicopters having to land to bring people in mm -hmm. up on the mountain. Mm -hmm. And all of this involved teams, Thai and multinational, mm -hmm. working together to look at what all the possibilities would be. Mm -hmm. So first credit definitely is to the Thai government, both national and provincial, mm -hmm. for integrating the Thai side and for welcoming in the multinational. Mm -hmm. um, in our own team, we did have people who were experienced in dealing with disasters, just sort of general disasters, mm -hmm. and uh, setting up um, a system of communications and planning so that every unit that is involved knows what its role can be. Mm -hmm. And we hope mm -hmm. that our people who have that background were of some assistance mm -hmm. to the Thai side as they were deciding which course of action to take, mm -hmm. where to focus their mm -hmm. attention, mm -hmm. how to divide up their mm -hmm. teams mm -hmm. and make best use of the multilateral side. Uh, after this victory, and we have mm. crossed over that, the, how did they say, did you have 
ever ever a chance to meet with the the crew I mean the operation team from US um, I met with our embassy people who came down uh, uh, who had participated and came yeah. down who were still vibrating with the excitement really? and the the positive result because they emphasized over and over um, you asked you said about good fortune um, <laughs> There were many, many ways this rescue could have failed. Mm. Many, many ways that it could have not been successful. Really? It needed expertise and um, a lot of good, strong-minded will working together mm. and a little bit of good fortune with the weather in particular mm -hmm. for it to work out. Yeah. Um, my ambassador flew up to Chiang Rai to see off the, oh. um, the, the whole group that went back to Japan oh. to thank them uh. for their assistance. Mm. And um, he saw the governor up there, the current governor of Chiang Rai, and the former governor of Chiang Rai. Mm. And there were representatives from uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the palace for that send off. Mm. It was very nice. Um, I met down here with a few of the people who mm. are going back to mm. Hawaii mm -hmm. uh, to talk about their experience mm. and what they saw. And we also had um, one member from Japan, um, a captain, an officer, a woman who was the spokesperson yeah, for our yeah, team, yeah, yeah. Wasn't uh, it? Captain Jessica Tate. Jessica, yeah. And we had her come down uh. and talk a little bit less, not just about the cave, though she, the cave rescue, she talked about the U.S. role there uh, and her own impressions. But we also took the opportunity to have her come down and talk about being a female officer mm, in the United States mm, military mm, and her experiences mm, there. Mm, and just ideas about uh, female opportunities in the modern world in some areas that traditionally were viewed as more male industries mm -hmm. so that was very interesting as well very interesting so what equipment require for the rescue that the u.s indo-pacific command also arranged for the mission for our side we brought in the people of course um, we brought in some equipment for getting around i talked about the ropes and other things mm -hmm. for helping to manage you um, rope there? i think well, there's a particular type of ropes or what? Well, people who knew about the ropes, they you're right. I may have found rope, may have brought some rope. <laughs> uh -huh. um, think we, I think we may have provided some of the additional air tanks. Mm -hmm. We helped to place mm -hmm. the air tanks yeah. along with the Thai uh -huh. and the multinational uh -huh. side. Um, we brought in food too. There was food on the ground. We also brought in rations. I was about to things. ask you later about the food. Uh, the, the rations, both for the teams who were working and in case they were needed mm. inside. Mm. I should also mention that um, the United States uh, private sector, there were several companies mm. who were very active in doing what they could to do oh, to support. Uh, you may know the company Chevron, Chevron who yeah. is very active in uh, the Gulf of Thailand uh, uh, with uh, petrol, petroleum, petroleum and gas. Uh -huh. They have a lot of experience in moving water that is digging wells and draining water out of it. Mm -hmm. So they sent engineers up to Chiang Rai and a lot of piping, Goodness. piping to help take the water out of the cave. Mm -hmm. And we heard afterwards from a Thai society that was working there that the Chevron engineers helped increase the efficiency of the pumps out, out. of the cave by oh. a very significant amount. Oh, yeah. So Chevron also, I understand, provided some gas detectors that could check the oxygen levels oh, inside the cave. You may have heard that's ah. one of the factors they, that helped the decision that we need to do this now because the oxygen levels are falling. Oh, yeah. We had a, a, a couple of small companies that donated pumps and donated... Uh, it's a rock climbing group out of Chiang Mai that donated people who are experienced in climbing around mountains, because mm -hmm. remember they're looking mm -hmm. for other openings, yeah. and who spoke both English and Thai uh, to help yeah, uh, yeah. the communication between the Thai yeah, side crazy. and the multilateral side. Uh -huh. We had a company that, uh, that specializes in very high capacity water pumps. And they also sent engineers to help advise to start with, and then they sent some of their best pumps. Cool. 
Now, as it happened, those pumps arrived the last night before the last boys came out. But again, so they weren't used, those best pumps weren't used there. But at the time, no one knew how fast the boys would come out yeah. and how long the operation would have to keep oh. going. So those pumps arrived mm. and the company has since donated them to mm. the Thai government uh, to use in any future yeah, emergencies. And that company right now is offering assistance to the Lao government to drain water away too, because mm. water is their specialty. I'm really grateful to all of them. Um, so what expression about this uh, from them? What is their expression there? I mean, that's such a difficult area. Food, you mentioned they have brought mm -hmm. it, but sufficiency is maybe not enough, right? Mm -hmm. So how about the Thai food and the people around there trying to promote, trying to help? We were, what if, what was a, I mm. heard this from, from our people from the embassy and mm. from Hawaii who came back mm. through Bangkok afterwards, how impressed they were, mm. how overwhelmed they were mm. by the local support, by mm. the, the Thai people who would say, your clothes are all dirty from working in the cave or diving. Give them to us, we will wash them and bring them back. Uh, or <laughs> you need something to eat here, let us give you something, okay? Uh, uh, Just looking, again, looking to help in any way they can uh, and expressing that lovely Thai spirit of warmth uh, and support. Uh, they were very impressed there. Somebody should have sent um, Jelia. <laughs> <Over there. laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so how did the U.S. team directly support this international mission? I mean, you already said that well, they have done it. That part we had it, again, uh, we had divers. Um, mm. We we were not. Our team was a sort of a general search and rescue. Uh, they weren't necessarily cave divers, and so our team, our divers uh, tended to be w focus on placing the, the air tanks tank. uh. so that the very experienced cave divers from the UK and Australia and other places Can and the Thai this? seals uh. could go all the way into uh, the boys. We had divers assisting yeah. with that and with the cave. Uh. We had uh, the team, as we talked about, uh, assisting in looking for other locations for drilling or access outside and preparing helicopter landing mm -hmm. zones and talking with the, the Thai side about how to safely mm -hmm. move loads by helicopter up mm -hmm. on the mountain, mm -hmm. which can be very dangerous. Mm, of course. Can be very dangerous, okay? And we had people um, working, as I said, in mm -hmm. helping with the coordination mm -hmm. and logistics planning, mm -hmm. which can be a challenge when you have lots of different agencies and lots of different countries oh, yeah. involved oh. there. And uh, then I know Captain mm. Tate mm. Uh, and her team, including some people from the embassy, tried to help, particularly with the international media. I understand there were somewhere between 1,000 and 1,500 media yeah. representatives there because yeah. the whole world was interested. <laughs> The whole world wanted to know. Uh, and so they were up there both talking to reporters on the ground and doing uh, nighttime interviews back to uh, channels all over the United States that wanted to know what was happening. Everyone was caught up in this story. And not to forget the, the one tragic side of the story mm, too, yeah, of, course. of course. The, the sacrifice of mm. now Lieutenant Commander mm -hmm. uh, Saman mm -hmm. um, who died serving mm. the boys yeah. and the coach, mm. gave his life to support them. And along with the story of the success of getting the boys and their coach out, we want to make sure we remember with the Thai people, the sacrifice of that former Navy SEAL who volunteered. Volunteered. He, he wasn't was even assigned to come. He volunteered to come help. Oh. And we remember him. Right, so thank you so much for being here. It's and, a great uh, pleasure. I this, this is a highlight, not just of my time in Thailand, but a highlight of my career. Uh -huh. And I did not go to Chiang Rai, uh -huh. but just having a part of starting the process and helping to support our team coming mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. to do, give whatever assistance they could to an effort led by the Thai government and have it be so successful in the end, that's a highlight for me and for the embassy. And it's a great opportunity for us to illustrate what we mean by friendship mm. and partnership between the U.S. people and the Thai people. 
It's gone on for 200 years. We expect yes. it will go on for 200 years more again. Yes. And the meaning of that partnership and of the training and exercises we do together, mm. it's to make this type of cooperation possible when the need arises. Thank you so much. Thank you, of the people Kusuma. here in our studio. It's our pleasure we, and our honor. Yeah. We have our program with great thanks to Mr. Peter Hammond, uh, his deputy chief of mission at the uh, U.S. Embassy in Bangkok. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Have a great day and thanks for watching Thailand today. And we hope to see you again. Thank you.